look look where he hits it. I mean, here's the stick, right? And here's where it it's all hits. I mean, Ringo has that. Psh, 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 psh. This is the original bass that I used. It's an SD Curly bass. It's the original mock-up. There's my Scorpion. Okay, everyone, it is time to hang out with Jack Blades of Night Ranger for a little thing we like to call rock and tell. It's like show and tell, but with much cooler stuff. What do you have for me today, Jack? Well, let's see. What do I have? Uh, uh, oh, um, how about how about a pair of used Ringo Starr drumsticks? How about that? How about right there? Can you see Ringo? When I played with Ringo, I did VH1 Storytellers and um, made the album and we did Letterman, Leno, all the shows and everything like that. And um, Ringo gave me one of his um, sets of, um, of of drumsticks. I mean, look, look where he hits it. I mean, here's the stick, right? And here's where it, it's all hits. I mean, Ringo has that, psh, 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 you know, on the cymbals, you know, and like he hits a snare and then he has that, that, that cross thing. Look where he hits it right in the center. I mean, it was just great. I mean, here, here. Let me illustrate Ringo and me. Anyway, so that was, that was, that was all. These are always my, um, you know, I have them up in my studio here and I just always have them around and stuff like that. Whenever I want to be truly inspired, I bring out the Ringo drumsticks and just sit there and start. Actually, sometimes I sing. I'm like Vince Neil. Vince always has a drumstick when he's singing tracks, you know, when he's making the records. I found that out when we, um, when I was up there singing on some of the, um, um, Dr. Feelgood album. I went up to um, to Canada, Little Mountain Studios up in Vancouver with Vince and everything like that and and sang on like Sticky Sweet and um, Same Old Situation. But Vince, whenever he sings, he always has a drumstick. Always has a drumstick in his hand. He's like singing. You know, he's singing along and just like doing this. So anyway, that's what I do when I need real inspiration. I grab one of Ringo's. Do you let other people touch the Ringo drumsticks when they come to your house or those kind of like, a, I don't think so, bro. Did you wash your hands? <laughs> no. I don't let anybody touch them. I don't let anybody touch them. But I did lose them for about four years, um, and and I was trying to figure out where they were. And I go I go over to my son's office, and there's all these drumsticks laying on the floor. And I'm like, oh, look at all these drumsticks. Some Kelly Keggy ones. Some, it's my Ringo drumsticks. What the hell? How do they? They just got thrown into a pile somewhere and got thrown. I'm like, thank goodness. So I finally found them after like four years. I was a little worried about that. Well, I'm glad you found them. Uh, yep, oh, what, yep. else, what else you got? Uh, there's tons in your room, obviously, but show us another oh, yeah. item. I don't know if I can hold it dead center, but it's the original mock-up of the of the album of the Midnight Madness album. I mean, look, see, they back then nothing was digital. See, they just took a picture and then they took other pictures of us and like, you know, and, and like glued them on it to like, OK, here's what it looks like, guys. And and we're like, well, that looks really good. That That's really cool and stuff like that. It needs a logo somewhere. And they're like, OK, so here, here, here. Just imagine this. We'll put the logo uh, right in the center here. Where is it? Where is it? Right. Right there. We'll put the logo right there, you know, right in the middle of the album. And that, of course, is the album. I, I wish I had one of my album covers out right now. But this is the actual original mock-up. I mean, look, see, it's all just paper and, uh, and you know, pictures and stuff like that. Original mock-up of, um, of the Midnight Madness album that sold millions and millions of copies. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, that is truly like show and tell. I mean, it's like a third grader was like, now put together an album cover, sir. And the <laughs> and pacing yeah. and Hey man, that's how we did it in 1983. That's how it was all done back in, back in the eighties. Everything wasn't digital and everything perfect. And here I'm going to do it on my computer. I mean, there wasn't even computers. There wasn't computers. In fact, a great story is we took the main picture of all our guys there. And, 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 um, and we'd always, when we were recording our um, uh, second album, the Midnight Madness album, you know, we were in LA and we'd always go up to the rainbow bar and grill, which is up on sunset. And about midnight, we'd bring down about 20 or 30 people and we'd all be partying and we'd still be recording and we'd be in there recording our record and everything like that but we'd all be partying and there'd be a big party going on in the in the other parts of the studio and all these pictures were spread out the original original pictures like you know on the you know celluloid and everything were spread out on this table and some girl grabbed the main one and went you know took it and split and left with it and the next day we're like where's that uh, Mick? you know had all the x's on it where's that picture that we're going to use for the cover of our album and we're like uh I don't see it here. And we're like, oh no, what about, uh, and we're so, so everybody called everybody that they could possibly think of that, that like was, you know, the night before that was with us up at, you know, in the party, all the guys in Motley, these guys, that guys. And, and so, so finally somebody tracked down, oh yeah, oh yeah. My girlfriend took a picture. We're like, come on, 
bring it back, bring it back. And she did, thankfully. And that is actually this picture of all of us, all of us. That's the actual picture that they cut out and put on the front of the album cover. So, I mean, that's a bit of a side story to that, um, to that thing. So we were like, Woo! we sweated out a big one on that one. <laughs> no more girlfriends are allowed at the parties. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> actually, actually, to tell you the truth, that didn't stop us. The next night it was like, come on, let's go. We're at the rainbow. Everybody, come on down to the studio. Let's have some fun. So that, that believe me, that didn't stop the, the action. Uh, all right. We are talking with Jack Blades of Night Ranger. Uh, his new album is ATBPO, and we are in the middle of playing Rock and Tell. What else can you show us? Rock and tell. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it's a great um, name, isn't it? Rock and tell. Rock and tell. Okay, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Rock and tell. Um, we were on tour of ZZ Top um, in 1984, when, right when Sister Christian was coming out, right when they, you know, the Illuminator album was huge and stuff like that. And we were in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, we had finished playing, and we were playing the big old Coliseum. And at that time, it was like a rodeo Coliseum, dirt floor and everything like that. It was like where they had rodeos and everything, right in downtown Phoenix. And um, and we were backstage in our dressing room, which was like kind of a dirt floor and everything like that. And it was in the winter. It was kind of, you know, it was cold in the winter. And so I had a leather jacket on. So I, we finished the show. I go walking off the show. You know, I go into the dressing room. I start to put my coat on. I put my I, I put my jacket on that was sitting on a chair, right? I put my jacket on. All of a sudden, I'm like, ow, that kind of hurts. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. And all of a sudden I, I lift the coat off and drop it down and a scorpion drops out of my sleeve and goes and walks along the floor. And I'm like, holy shit, I just got bit by, I just got stung by a scorpion. You know what I mean? And, uh, and one of the, uh, one of the stagehands was there and he's like, oh, here, let me grab it. He had a Dixie cup and he like goes down and picks up the scorpion and looks and he says, you only have to worry about it if it's one of the little ones. And he looks down and he goes, yeah, it's one of the little ones. I'm like, oh, that's great. So I get rushed to the hospital. They give me shots. And evidently, I wasn't allergic to it. Evidently, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't writhing and foaming at the mouth and everything like that. It just hurt like hell, man. So anyway, as the story goes, we still had to play. And the next night, I think we were in um, El Paso or, or, or something like that. It was easy. And, um, and um, Billy Gibbons comes walking up to me and my arm's killing me and stuff like that. And he says, um, uh, Mr. Blades, I have a little something for you right here. Um, and he walks up and he, he like, he hands me, he had, he had it encased in Lucite, the scorpion. He got the stage hand, had it encased in Lucite and wrote on it, wrote on it, um, in memory of Phoenix, Arizona, 112, 8, 1984 ZZ top tour, the big sting have mercy, Billy G. And so there you go. There's my scorpion. That oh, um, wow. Gibbons had Gibbons had encased in loose. <laughs> He's a character. He Can is a nut. A little bit closer for us to try and actually see the little booger. Can you see? Can you see him in there? Oh yeah, I see him in there. He's floating in the middle. Okay. Yeah, he's floating in the middle. See the scorpion. See the see the sting on the tail. Yep. Yeah. And he's and floating see, in the oh, middle. Let me see the uh, the uh, signature, the writing there, there on the side. Where is it? Somewhere on the side here. I don't know. I don't know if you can see on the. It got rubbed off his. Him. He signed it on the side and the back and everything like that. But that's it. That's it. That's the one. Have mercy, Billy G. <laughs> it's so a big sting. That, that's one of my ma That's one of my favorite things I keep around all the time. Well, Jack, before I let you go, um, I, I'd like to kind of pick something behind you to talk about because you, you have such a great background. A lot of gold albums I see, some cool instruments. I mean, on the fly, when you turn around, uh, what inspires you to show it off? Um, oh, here. Here, hold it. Yeah. It's like this the is, mystery this, show and tell item. Ooh. This is the mystery show and tell that you came up. This is the original bass that I used. It's an SD curly bass that I used on the first album and um, all the first tour with Sammy Hager and all the pictures of the Dawn Patrol record. They're all taken with this bass and everything like that on it. But here's the story. Hamer started making me a Jack Blades bass in 1980, the end of 83, early 84. So I started playing those. So this, I had no use for it. So I think in 1985, I gave it to a KLOL auction in Houston, Texas. Um, and they auctioned it off, um, you know, to help, you know, their, their auction thing that they do for the needy people in, in Houston and everything like that. So I kind of lost, you know, I just gave it away. I'm like, I don't need this thing anymore. So I gave it out. But then my wife finds it years and years later. In fact, just three, two years later, she found an antique dealer that bought it from the original guy that got it 
And, 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 um, you know, and, and the original guy had it that bought it from the auction and he kept it for like 15 years. And then, and then he went to an antique show and he sold it and some antique dealer bought it and down in Florida and he had it for, for like 15 years. Right. So he's holding on to it for 15 years. And, and, and then, and then he contacted somebody, somebody told somebody said, Hey, that's, that's Jack Blade. Yeah. That's Jack Blade's base. So my wife got it from him. And gave it to me in 2019 on my birthday as a birthday gift. I, mean, this is, I, I got my original. I mean, still got like, still got the tape on the back of it. I mean, these guys never did anything with it. The batteries are still in it. Everything was still on it. You know, I signed it back then and, and stuff like that. But it's all, it's, it's exactly, exactly how I left it. Everything. Not, they didn't do anything. They never played it. They didn't do anything. They just stuck it on a wall, you know, and hung it up on a wall for all these years. So it's like frozen in time. And I finally got the old baby back. How about that? I love it. It's like one of those good stories of when someone gets their gear stolen and they find it in a pawn shop years later as well. Right. That's Luckily. right. That's right. It's like Peter Frampton, Peter Frampton, that, that um, his uh, Les Paul that got burned in the fire and stuff like that and ended up stolen and all like that. And years and years later, it's, it's some guys down in Jamaica or something in some bar playing it going, Hey, this is Peter Frampton's concern. Somebody sitting there going, I know someone who wants that guitar. That is, <laughs> so, that is and he, Peter Frampton's guitar. Yeah, that is Peter. You know, it was all burnt at the top and stuff like that. And he got it back. Yeah, it's that kind of a story. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm eternally indebted to my wife for this. Oh, that's fantastic. Jack Blades, thank you so much for hanging out today. Everyone needs to make sure that they go and grab the new Night Ranger album, A-T-B-P-O, and the band played on. Thanks so much for your time today, Jack. That's it. You got it. We'll see you guys. Keep rocking. We'll see you all out there on the road. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point. All right? Keep it coming.